So, hi, my name is Joseph Lupin. Um, I have a background in technology and finance, did uh, robotics, machine vision, uh, neural nets research uh, for a number of years, um, did lots of software engineering, took me eventually to work for a while at Goldman Sachs. Um, Shortly after Goldman Sachs, I sort of pivoted to the world of finance. A friend of mine asked me if I would join him in starting a, a hedge fund or a set of hedge funds. And so I started to become more aware of the, the world of finance, which I thought was kind of silly. Um, for most of my career, I, did, I thought my econ major friends were wasting their time. Uh, and technology was the only thing that was interesting. But uh, I learned about the bigger game um, and enjoyed it. And, um, got involved in different kinds of trading and that, that sort of took me, it basically made it so it would be impossible for me to miss Bitcoin and so I became aware of Bitcoin pretty early and I saw the, um, the implications um, when I read uh, Satoshi's white paper, uh, implications for how it could transform society essentially, uh, decentralizing technologies. Um, it wasn't until I read Vitalik's white paper describing the Ethereum ecosystem that uh, um, it really crystallized how we could build it, um, if not quickly, but um, directly. But we could actually uh, start to implement use cases in many different niches and many different business, social, economic sectors um, on this blockchain-based, decentralized, all the things platform. Core value proposition of Ethereum is that uh, it essentially represents a non-repudiable, something that you can't say I didn't say that um, to, uh, uncensorable, shared source of truth. Uh, it essentially represents it's like the first um, general purpose world computer. And so it, it is because of the mathematics of the situation, because everybody can, <coughs> excuse me, everybody can have a piece of, or can have all of the data. Everybody can see uh, all the business logic that affects the data. Um, everybody can trust that no minority actor can improperly affect the data or the system. So um, trustful computing, transparency, I was uh, one of eight founders of the Ethereum project and worked on that for quite a while. Um, about 22, 23 months ago, I, I ramped down my participation on that project and ramped up consensus. I was confident that that project was going to deliver version one of Ethereum, um, but it wasn't in the purview of that project to build lots of decentralized applications to build at the application layer. It was more focused on the protocol layer. Um, wasn't in that, the purview of that organization to build for-profit projects or companies. Um, so I started consensus to do exactly that, to build uh, a bunch of projects, products, companies um, for the public Ethereum blockchain. And, and uh, those are things that uh, can also be deployed on private permissioned uh, Ethereum blockchains. So uh, since then, we've done a lot of work on product and have released a bunch of those things, can still have a, a pipeline of things that we're building and releasing, built a lot of the infrastructure for Ethereum, um, developer tools and backend infrastructure. Uh, and I guess 13, 14 months ago now, we started getting really busy on the consulting front. So we been building, advising companies on blockchain strategy, um, but mostly building software for them in um, insurance industry, a couple of different insurance companies, general financial services, applications, healthcare, uh, energy industry, music industry, supply chain management. With consensus, we're going to keep building projects, products um, for the public blockchain and private blockchains. Um, there's an enormous amount of infrastructure to build before consumers can make good use of this stuff. Essentially the internet uh, was pretty much invented in 1990 and um, became prominent in the late 90s. Uh, so I, I see a similar adoption curve, perhaps a little bit more compressed for blockchain, uh, for public blockchain. Um, in the meantime, there's a, a very strong value proposition for lots of companies right now. Lots, lots of different focused projects, um, could be government, could be companies, 
um, and we are helping lots of those um, interests build what they want to build. So a lot of that stuff, and, and a lot of that stuff is um, helping to fund and and drive development of things that will um, make their way to the public blockchain. Transparency, um, this shared source of truth, this uh, infrastructure that we can all interoperate on, whether we're software developers building stuff that easily interoperates with other things or, or people who are establishing their own identity, their own self-sovereign identity and using that as an access point to lots of different kinds of applications, perhaps like a decentralized Facebook, uh, that's going to put all the power into the periphery in the hands of the people. It's going to decentralize lots of our systems. And yes, I, I think that's a very good thing for society. It's not clear that we ever have to communicate the philosophical benefits to end users. We certainly have to communicate those things to developers. Um, but really, um, I was at a, a blockchain retreat uh, in north of Toronto a couple weeks ago and a bunch of people in that room felt like we needed some specific message, uh, some specific name for this thing that we could share with consumers and enlighten them. Um, my feeling is that this is just the next internet. This is um, World Wide Web version 3 uh, and that we're going to be delivering applications that look like web page or web applications or that look like mobile applications. They'll just have uh, this different kind of database in the back end, this much more trustworthy database that enables um, easy interoperation amongst lots of different things.